We've been following a crisis facing the state's foster care system the last two years, as dozens of children spend time sleeping in state office buildings because there wasn't enough space in treatment centers or in foster placements. One major focus has been getting resources to families sooner to keep the kids from entering the system in the first place. KXN investigator Avery Travis has a closer look at one of these specific efforts that's getting a new influx of money after sitting at a standstill for years. Children that are in Cameron Hernholm knows how traumatic it can be for a child when they're removed from their home, even when it's for their own safety. I personally am a former foster mother and I'm um, very aware of the system here in Texas. Texas has one of the highest rates of child removals due to alcohol or drug abuse by parents. National foster care data shows that's more than 60% of cases compared to the national average of just under 40%. It is a very vulnerable place and typically what we find is why a mother wouldn't get treatment is because she doesn't know what would happen to her children if she were to seek treatment. Do I lose my kid or do I go and get treatment for an illness that I know I need help with? It's a cycle Hernholm and her team at the Dallas-based Nexus Recovery Center are trying to break. By keeping families together while treating pregnant women and mothers recovering from addiction, they can keep kids out of the Child Protective Services system. <laughs> So the idea here is let's get a tracking on it. In 2013 and again in 2019, lawmakers, including Charles Perry, directed the state to collect data on how many parents test positive for a controlled substance during a CPS investigation and how many children test positive for alcohol or a controlled substance at birth and how many children coming into the system are diagnosed with a chronic medical condition or a disability because of it. We should know. And I think foster parents specifically have a right to know. But for nearly four years after that, the Department of Family and Protective Services said it didn't have the funding to make it happen. According to a memo released just earlier this month, the agency does track much of this information in the computer system housing children's case files. But it's in narrative form, so there was no way to pull it out to create this kind of report, other than manually reading every investigation. At the time, it said this would be too costly and time consuming without additional funding. But then just a few weeks later, after we started asking questions, the agency gave us this update. It says it found the money necessary to fix the system using existing state appropriations. Those updates are now scheduled for this fiscal year. The data that's out there is great, uh, but the more data we have access to, the more sophisticated that data is, the better we're able to be. Um, with the services that we provide. Jesse Boer with Depelton Children's Center says DFPS already made it easy for foster and adoption agencies such as theirs to access this type of information on a case by case basis. But having a wider view of the issue with aggregate data will help everyone know how to better target resources. Reach as many people who need our services as possible in the highest quality way. And data is what allows us to do that um, effectively and efficiently. Avery Travis, KXAN Investigate. And we will follow that funding promise and any other updates regarding the foster care system from the upcoming legislative session beginning in January. But until those updates are made, leadership at Depelchin told us there are other measures DFPS currently tracks that are often used as potential indicators of substance use. For example, neglectful supervision. According to DFPS's most recent monthly report from October, neglectful supervision was found in more than 67% of CPS investigations in Texas.